Hi students, this is Professor Sachin Jain back with most important questions of P block elements. In this video, I'll be covering P block 11th section, group 13 and 14. And we'll be discussing about 20 questions which covers the overall concepts of this particular chapter. Out of 20 questions, some are being made and some are picked up from the important entrance examination. So let's start with this video. First question, on heating boron with caustic potash, that is KOH, the pair of products formed are, the options are potassium borate and dihydrogen, potassium borate and water, potassium boride and water, borex and dihydrogen. Try to get the answer and then I'll discuss. Okay, got the answer. Here is the solution. When boron reacts with caustic potash that is KOH in aqueous medium, it forms KBO2 that is potassium metaborate and evolves the dihydrogen gas. So the answer is option A. Next question. What is not true about borax? Molecular formula is Na2B4O7.10H2O. Crystalline borax contains tetranuclear units of B4O5OH4 to negative. It hydrolyzes in water giving alkaline solution. It contains four BOB or BOB bonds. First of all, borax is an important compound of boron with a molecular formula Na2B4O7.10H2O. So that is a true statement. Crystalline borax contains tetranuclear units of B4O5OH4 2 negative? Yes, Na2B4O7.10H2O actually is written in the form as Na2B4O5OH4 2 negative dot 8H2O. So this is also a true statement. It hydrolyzes in water giving alkaline solution? Yes, borax is a salt of a strong base NaOH and a weak acid that is boric acid. So, a solution of that will be alkaline with a pH greater than 7. So, C is also a correct statement. It contains 4 BOB bonds? No. This particular structure has 5 BOB bonds. So, this is the structure of borax, the anion unit, where 4 boron atoms are linked via oxygen atoms and each of the boron is linked to OH group. That's why the formula is B, 4, O, 5 and O, H, 4, 2, minus. Some of the important points in this structure are the two boron atoms in borax are sp3 hybridized and the other two boron atoms are sp2 hybridized. This boron is forming three bonds hence it is planar sp2 hybridized. This boron forms four bonds and that is why it is sp3 tetrahedral. And the number of warp linkages if you observe are five and not four. Correct answer is option D because it does not contain four warp bonds but five. Next question. The structure of diborane contains. So the option has Two centered two electron bonds and three centered two electron bonds numbers. So let's look at the structure of diborane. This is how the diborane structure looks like. Here the boron undergoes sp3 hybridization and out of the four hybrid orbitals of boron, only three have the valence electrons. The fourth one is vacant. So this two hybrid orbitals of boron overlaps with two hydrogen forming 
two center two electron terminal bonds similar is the case for another boron on the terminal ends this two hybrid orbitals of boron overlaps with two hydrogen atoms forming two two center two electron bonds so totally there are four two center two electron bonds but these bridge bonds contain one two and three centers but the number of electrons shared are only two so these are bridge bonds which are three center two electron bonds and the number of three center two electron bonds are two and these have the banana shape in the three dimension and they are very famously also called banana bonds so the correct answer would be four two center two electron terminal bonds and two three center two electron bridge bonds next is a simple question the hybrid state of carbon in diamond graphite and fullerene are options as sp3 sp2 hybridization now diamond graphite and fullerene are all crystalline allotropes of carbon graphite has a planar sheet like structure in which the carbon is bonded to three other carbon atoms and it undergoes sp2 hybridization and they have planar sheets and the fourth electron is weakly bonded to the sheets and they are linked together by weak van der Waals forces of attraction diamond has a covalent network of cc bonds in which each carbon is tetrahedrally bonded to four other carbon and hence it is sp3 hybridized fullerene is obtained from graphite only so fullerene which is c60 named as buckminster fullerene this buckminster fullerene c60 molecule has 26 membered rings and 12 five membered rings and each carbon over here is sp2 hybridized so the sequence in which we are asked is diamond sp3 graphite sp2 and fullerene sp2 answer is option a on passing co2 through lime water the milkiness appears initially which redissolves the appearance and disappearance of milkiness is due to the formation of options are calcium bicarbonate and calcium carbonate respectively calcium carbonate and calcium bicarbonate respectively calcium bicarbonate and calcium hydroxide respectively calcium hydroxide and calcium carbonate respectively so when co2 is passed through lime water it turns milky due to the formation of calcium carbonate which is insoluble in water so the milkiness of the solution is due to the formation of calcium carbonate which is insoluble carbonate however when excess of co2 is passed through this solution of carbonate the milkiness disappears this is due to the formation of calcium bicarbonate which is colorless and soluble in water so because of the solubility of calcium bicarbonate the milkiness disappears so the correct answer is the milkiness appears due to calcium carbonate and disappears due to calcium bicarbonate remember CaCO3 is insoluble but the bicarbonate of calcium is soluble next question what is false about carbon it has crystalline as well as amorphous allotropes it can form p pi p pi bond with other carbon atoms it cannot form p pi p pi bond with atoms like nitrogen and oxygen c60 is an allotrope of carbon so let's look at the option one by one carbon has crystalline as well as amorphous allotropes very correct it can form p pi p pi bond with other carbon atoms very correct carbon belongs to the second period and the p orbitals of carbon if unhybridized can overlap with other p orbitals and they can form p pi p pi bond this will be an efficient overlap because the carbon atom is overlapping with itself and that's why the bond formed would be strong because of greater overlap 
it cannot form p pi p pi bond with atoms like nitrogen and oxygen false this should be the correct answer because carbon nitrogen and oxygen all are placed in the second period the p orbitals of all of them are very similar in size and shape and that's why carbon can overlap with nitrogen as well as oxygen to form the pi bonds and these pi bonds would be p pi p pi because they are the overlap of p orbitals in fact carbon can't form p pi d pi or d pi d pi bonds because of the absence of the vacant d orbitals c60 is an allotrope of carbon yes c60 is nothing but buckminster fullerene and that's a crystalline allotrope of carbon so the correct answer here would be option c next question alumina can be converted to anhydrous alcl3 by heating alumina with chlorine gas alumina with hcl gas alumina with nacl in solid state a mixture of alumina and carbon in dry chlorine gas now here we want to convert alumina to anhydrous alcl3 so first of all we will not be able to use an aqueous media and we need to remove the oxygen and add chlorine to it now the removal of oxygen is done by using coke or carbon which is a good reducing agent and thereon the aluminium and chlorine adds up to form alcl3 so the reaction is a mixture of alumina and carbon in dry chlorine gas why it should be dry because we want to form anhydrous alcl3 this is the reaction alumina plus 3 carbon plus 3 chlorine at 1000 degree celsius alumina is a very stable compound and its breakdown would be difficult at lower temperature hence a temperature of 1000 degrees celsius is required so as we discussed the carbon takes away the oxygen and then aluminium adds up to chlorine to form alcl3 and the carbon gets eliminated in the form of carbon monoxide these vapors are then cooled to form the solid anhydrous aluminium chloride answer is option d next the order of acidic strength of boron 3 halides a very important and a good question so here we need to discuss the acidic strength of boron trihalides that is bf3 bcl3 bbr3 and bi3 as we've already discussed in the synopsis that theoretically the answer should be bf3 is a strong lewis acid because the fluorine wing minus i group will attract the electron towards itself and make boron highly electron deficient but that is not the correct answer in fact bf3 is the weakest lewis acid in this comparison the reason here is boron and fluorine both belongs to the second period so fluorine because of the presence of p orbitals can overlap with vacant orbital of boron and form p pi p pi back bond and this back bond between boron and fluorine is strong because of the comparable orbital size but as, as we move from fluorine to fluorine bromine and iodine the size of the halogen is increasing but the boron size is fixed that is why the overlap between boron and fluorine bromine or iodine is not that efficient hence a p pi p pi back bond is not possible for the other halides that's the reason bf3 becomes a weak lewis acid and bi3 becomes a strong lewis acid and the order is bi3 bbr3 bcl3 and bf3 option a next a metal m forms chlorides in plus 2 and plus 4 oxidation states which of the following statement about these chlorides is correct now when we talk about a metal m forming chlorides in plus 2 and plus 4 oxidation state from the oxidation state itself plus 2 and plus 4 we should recognize that it is a question related to group 14 because the group oxidation state of group 14 is plus 2 and plus 4. Options MCl2 is more volatile than MCl4. 
MCL2 is more soluble in anhydrous ethanol than MCL4. MCL2 is more ionic than MCL4. And MCL2 is more easily hydrolyzed than MCL4. Now to answer these questions, we need to analyze the covalent and ionic character of these metallic chlorides. And for that, obviously, we'll discuss Fachan's rule. As per Fachan's rule, a compound having small cation, large anion and high positive charge has high covalent character. Fajan's rule, I have always said, for ionic character, just remember la lo rule. For ionic character, the rule is large cation, small anion and low positive charge. So, I have discussed over here covalent character. So, it will be opposite conditions that is small cation, large anion and high positive charge. So, with this condition, the compound will have high covalent character and less ionic character. Due to this, it will have a low boiling point, hence the compound would be more volatile. Now, a compound which have covalent character will be easier to boil and that's why the compound would have a low boiling point and the boiling point lower indicates more volatility. A compound having more of covalent character will also be soluble in non-polar solvents because ionic compounds dissolve in polar solvents and covalent compounds dissolve in because of covalent character and high positive charge will be more hydrated and that is why will be more easily hydrolyzed. So the compound with plus 2 and plus 4 the high positive charge is for plus 4 hence MCL4 will have high covalent character low boiling point more volatile soluble in non-polar solvents and that will be more easily hydrolyzed. So, MCL2 is more volatile? False. MCL2 is more soluble? No. MCL2 is more ionic? Yes. MCL2 is more easily hydrolyzed? No. So, the correct statement is option C. MCL2 is more ionic than MCL4 as per Fachan's rule. Next one. In which of the following silicates cyclic structure is present? Options given are mica, asbestos, emerald, and talc. So again in the synopsis, I have discussed about all the types of silicates with their anion structure and the number of oxygen atoms shared with the examples. So here, out of the options, mica and talc are two-dimensional sheet silicates which are also called phyllosilicates, two-dimensional sheet silicates are also called phyllosilicates having the anion unit as Si2O5 n times 2n negative and the number of oxygen atoms shared are 3 in two-dimensional sheet or phyllosilicates. Asbestos is a double chain silicates and double chain silicates are also called amphi bowls. MV bowls. The anion unit is Si4O11N 6N negative. Emerald is a cyclic silicate. There is no other name for it. And have SiO3N 2N minus anion unit. And the number of oxygen atoms shared are 2 for cyclic silicates. So, the question here was which of the following is a cyclic silicate? The answer is emerald. Next, which of the following is amorphous form of silica? It's a simple factual question. The options given are quartz, crystabellite, tridimite and kieselger. Now, silica have crystalline as well as amorphous forms. The crystalline forms of silica are quartz, crystabellite and tridimite and kieselger is the amorphous form of silica. So, the answer is kieselger. Next, which of the following anions is present in single chain silicates? Now, the single chain silicates are also called pyroxenes and the anion unit present is SiO3 2 negative. So, single chain silicates are also called pyroxenes. Anion unit present here is SiO3 2 minus, that's option C. 
Next, which of the following oxidation states are most characteristic for lead and tin? Now, whenever a question about oxidation state and their stability is related, we should only think about inert pair effect. And a simple rule which I have given for inert pair effect is smaller element have higher oxidation state more stable and heavier element have smaller oxidation state which is more stable. So in the group 14 that is carbon family we have carbon, silicon, germanium, tin and lead. In this family carbon, silicon, germanium and tin prefer a higher oxidation state of plus 4 and lead because of the poor shielding effect prefer a lower oxidation state of plus 2. So the options are plus 2, plus 2, plus 4, plus 2, plus 2, plus 4 and plus 4, plus 4. And as per the discussion and relating to inert pair effect for lead the heavier element plus 2 is more stable and for tin plus 4 is the most characteristic oxidation state and also more stable. Next question, which of the following is correct? Boric acid is a protonic acid. False. Boric acid is not a protonic acid because in boric acid H3BO3 boron is electron deficient. So it has a tendency to accept the electron pair from the OH of water and form BOH4 negative anion. So from water it accepts the electron pair from OH and breaks down the water to give away H plus ion. So boric acid is not a protonic acid. In fact, it gives a proton when it is dissolved in water and accepts the electron pair from OH group of water. Beryllium exhibits coordination number of sex. False. Beryllium is a period 2 element and all period 2 elements have a maximum covalence of 4 because of the absence of vacant d orbitals and hence beryllium cannot exhibit a coordination number of 6. Chlorides of both beryllium and aluminium have a bridged structure in solid state that is absolutely correct because the chloride of beryllium that is PeCl2 exists as a polymer wherein the chlorine exists as a bridge between the two beryllium atoms and AlCl3 exists as a dimer. Again, the Cl acts as a bridge between the aluminium atoms. So here, one more important thing to remember is beryllium chloride is a polymer and aluminium chloride exists as a dimer in solid state. Number of isomers possible for disubstitute bor borazine is 3. That's false. So out of the options, the correct option is C. Now let's first discuss about option D, why it is false. Borazin is borazol or inorganic benzene. Why? Because here the nitrogen and boron are alternately placed and they are joined together by single and double bonds. And each boron and nitrogen is bonded to hydrogen atom. So when we have a disubstituted borazin, Disubstituted borazine, the possibilities of substitution could be at nitrogen boron, kind of ortho substituted, then nitrogen nitrogen meta substituted, and nitrogen to boron that is para substituted. So, number of isomers should be 3. No. If we look at the structure, the ring doesn't have the similar atoms. It has an alternate arrangement of nitrogen and boron atom. So, when we start with nitrogen, the three possible structures are NB, NN and NB at the para. But if I start with B, the BN will give me a similar ortho structure. But the meta wherein the two substituents are at BB position will give me a different isomer. From the para BN would be a similar isomer to the previous case. So the number of isomers would not be 3, it will be 4. Look at this. The first possibility will be at B and N. Second is B and N. 
at the para type substitution the third is nn meta and the fourth is bb meta where y is the substituent and any type substituted borazol or borazine will have four isomers but if we talk about benzene since the ring has similar atoms the number of di substituted isomers are only 3 so the correct option is c next question among the following substituted silanes silanes are the hydride of silicon that is sih4 similar to methane ch4 silane is sih4 The question is among the following substituted silanes the one which will give rise to cross linked silicon polymer on hydrolysis is R4SI tetraalkyl silane RSiCl3 trichloromonoalkyl silane R2SiCl2 dichloro dialkyl silane or R3SiCl that is chloro trialkyl silane now if you want to have a cross linking silicon polymer we need to have the oh group on the sides we need to have the oh group on the side and above and below also meaning let's look at this if i have the starting material as r sicl3 a trichloro substituted silane and if i hydrolyze this So three and H two O will be added. The HCl gets removed three n times, and we get a pol. Uh, we get and we get a hydroxy substituted compound as R S I O H O H O H. Now this O H can link with another molecule, and with the condensation, that is loss of water, it can form S I O S I linkage in the linear form. and this oh and this oh can link above and below to form si o si linkage in the cross linking manner meaning the structure would be si o si linkage in the linear form above and below so when we have a polymer with linear chains linked by some group or atom they are called as cross linked polymers so for cross linking the silane which will be required is R S I C L three. In the context of all Harold process for extraction of aluminium, which of the following statement is correct? C O and C O two are produced in this process. Alumina is mixed with calcium fluoride, which lowers the melting point of the mixture and increases conductivity. Aluminium 3 plus is reduced to aluminium at cathode. Na3AlF6 serves as the electrolyte. So, Na3AlF6, which is also commercially called cryolite, Na3AlF6 also commercially called cryolite. In the Hall-Harold process, what happens is this Na3AlF6 and CaF2 is mixed with alumina. Alumina is the electrolyte in this case. CaF2 and Na3AlF6 are used to increase conductivity and lower the melting point of the stable compound alumina. So Na Na3AlF6 dissociates to give 3Na+, Al3+, and 6F-. CaF2 breaks down to form Ca2+ and 2F-. Alumina breaks down to form 2 Al3+ and 3 O2-. So now the alumina being the electrolyte, aluminium 3 plus ions get reduced at cathode to form aluminium. So reduction of Al3+ gives aluminium. Oxide undergoes oxidation to form oxygen gas at the anode, and this O2. so produced reacts with carbon which acts as the electrode at the anode to give carbon monoxide and this carbon monoxide can further oxidize to carbon dioxide also so let's look at the options again co and co2 are produced yes alumina is mixed with caf2 which lowers the melting point and increases conductivity yes 
Al3 plus is reduced to Al at cathode. Al3 plus is reduced to Al at cathode. Yes, any 3 AlF6 serves as the electrolyte? No, because the electrolyte is alumina and CaF2 and any 3 AlF6 both are used to lower melting point and increase conductivity. So the correct answer is D. Now we have multiple answer correct type questions MACT. Which of the following species are not known? Not known. SIF6 2 negative. SICL6 2 negative. CF6 2 negative. PBCL6 2 negative. First of all, this carbon, silicon, lead are all from group 14 carbon family. Carbon belongs to the second period. And as we have already discussed, it can't expand its covalence beyond 4 because of the absence of vacant d orbitals. Hence, the coordination number of carbon maximum would be 4. That's why CF6 2 negative won't be possible. For silicon and lead, the number of bonds can be 6 because of the presence of vacant d orbitals. But even in this, when we talk about SI, bonded to F or and SI bonded to Cl. Out of this two anions, SiCl6 won't exist because silicon which is a smaller element, it can hold six fluorine atoms but for the same silicon holding six chlorine or bromine or iodine would be difficult. So SiCl6 won't be possible. For lead, a bigger element, yes, PbCl6, Pb Br6 would also be possible. So, the species not known are SiCl6 2 negative and CF6 2 negative. The correct statement for orthoboric acid is R. It behaves as a weak acid in water due to self ionization. I have just discussed that orthoboric acid is not a protonic acid, meaning it is not giving away the H. Plus on the basis of self ionization. So self ionization is false, is bad. Acidity of its aqueous solution increases upon addition of ethylene glycol. Yes, I just discuss about this in detail. It has a three dimensional structure due to H bonding. No, it has a planar structure. Because boron has sp2 hybridization and the three bonds of boron lies in the same plane. So the structure is planar due to H bonding and not three dimensional. It's a weak electrolyte in water. Yes. So let's look at the four options again. H3PO3 is a weak monobasic Lewis acid and H3PO3 takes away the lone pair from the OH of water and forms BOH4 negative anion and H plus. Now if I want to make, if I want to increase the strength of orthoboric acid, I need to shift this equilibrium to the right. This is done by addition of synethylene diol or glycol. So, the equilibrium in the above rea so the equilibrium in the above reaction is shifted in forward direction by addition of syndiol like ethylene glycol, which forms a stable complex BOH4 negative. So we have BOH4 negative and this is CH2, CH2, OH, OH that is nothing but ethylene glycol. So the H of the glycol and the OH of the anion condenses to form H2O from all the sides and it forms a cyclic structure which is highly stable of BO, CH2, CH2O, O, CH2, CH2O negative. So, because of the ethylene glycol, this BOH4 negative changes to this cyclic anion and the equilibrium is shifted to forward giving more H plus and that's why the acidic strength would increase. It has a planar sheet like structure due to H bonding and not three dimensional and it is a weak electrolyte in water. So, the multiple correct answers would be Acidity of its aqueous solution increases by adding ethylene glycol and it's a weak electrolyte in water.
Which of the following is correct about borax B test in oxidizing flame? Mn2 plus gives violet color, CO2 plus gives blue color, Ni2 plus gives red brown color, and CO2 plus give green in hot and green blue in cold flame. Now this is a factual question and you need to remember this table. So we have the elements, the transition elements which generally give the borax B test the possible outcomes in oxidizing and reducing flame. Here the question was about oxidizing flame. First is manganese. So manganese gives violet color in hot or cold condition. So the first one is correct. CO2 plus gives blue color. Yes. Ni2 plus gives red brown or brown color. Yes. CO2 plus gives green in hot and green blue in cold flame. Yes. So all the options given here are correct about borax about borax we test. Which of the following set contains only amphoteric oxides? So whenever we talk about amphoteric oxides, the common elements are zinc, aluminium, tin, lead. And if you look at the option zinc oxide, alumina, lead and tin oxide are amphoteric. In the second option, zinc is amphoteric, barium being a metallic oxide would be basic, SO2 being a non-metallic oxide would be acidic and CO is famously neutral. In fact, only three oxides are neutral, CO, NO and N2O, which I normally give a mnemonic as no co N2O, NO, CO and N2O. In the third option, CO is neutral, PBO is amphoteric, barium barium peroxide basic and N2O neutral. P2O5, N2O5, Cl2O7 are all acidic oxides because they are non-metal oxides. Na2O being a metallic oxide would be a basic oxide. So only amphoteric oxide, the set is zinc, aluminium, lead and tin oxide, that's option A. Thank you for watching this. This 20 MCQs covers most of the important concepts of P-block from, from group 13 and 14 